this year through Arts Educator 2.0, I ordered um, two additional iPads um, to the one that I got at the beginning of the program. And so I've been using those in the classroom with the students. The iPad I used more as a, like a, more of a free time thing that we use. And I try to tie it in, you know, with the lesson if I can. And if not, I just let the students use um, different art apps. It's simple. I use that yeah. to teach um, the piano keyboard to work, you know, pitches little patterns. Um, I teach a lot, well, let's see, a lot of younger children from age three up, and that works real well. Uh, with my special learners, I've used the, um, the Triangle app, the Bongos app. If I want to go into the older kids, I taught texture with a little app called Ant's Band Light, <laughs> where you just tap the ant and whatever instrument he's playing, you either turn him on or off. Entire Currently, we're using the app Sketchbook Pro. We use Sketchbook Pro for the students. I put up a sketch assignment, one every week, sometimes one every two weeks, depending on their workload. And they now have the opportunity to take a sketch pad, an iPad out, and use Sketchbook Pro to do their sketches and turn those in versus using paper. With the iPads in the classroom, I've used them for a number of different activities. Some for art history. I found a great optical illusion app on there um, that showed the, the sixth graders uh, tons of different optical illusions that they could look at to come up with ideas. And I've used just general apps like Doodle Buddy that can do um, more than one thing. The, there's drawing, painting on it. Um, you can add icons, words, things like that. So I've used a number of different apps. The one that I found that works really well for instruction is um, the Pottery app, where I have a lot of trouble with the younger kids understanding how the kiln works. And it literally shows them on the screen what it looks like inside the kiln when the pottery's firing. And it shows them what it looks like before and after so they can see like the bisque stage before it happens. So um, I really enjoy using it as a instructional art history and production tools. I use mainly Phenolic, where I program all of my band literature and uh, chorus music into it, where the kids can hear what their part sounds like, they can play along with it. I can also play another band instrument part or another vocal part that they can play or sing against it, so they can hear how their part fits with uh, another section of the choir, another section of the band. And I also use Audacity quite a bit, where I can import the uh, accompaniment music for the chorus and I can change the tempo, I can slow it down so that I can work uh, note or pitch accuracy a little bit more with each section of the chorus and I can also uh, change the pitch if the key is too high for the kids and they can't reach the high notes in the song, I can drop it down a little bit without affecting the, uh, the tempo of the piece as well and it's helped me out tremendously with uh, being able to be more successful and fitting the needs of the kids that I'm working with. As far as using the, the cameras and all the technology in my classroom, I have been so comfortable and so lucky to use the docking camera. That seems to be the thing that kids use or like the most. With the document camera, I'm taking pictures of the kids' work as they finish. We can display it on the Prometheum board immediately so the students can see what they're doing, what what's working, what isn't working. At my school, we didn't have any technology. I didn't have a computer, a printer, nothing. Zero technology. When I came to art as an educator, I got a netbook that I use in class, a colored printer. I also got a screen and a ladybug and a projector. I do games, I have done rub off lessons um, with, with the learning of the theory. They've actually done little comp composition lessons where they've taken their own notes. They can take their finger, you know, touch touch the note on the board, move it up. Um, that way it takes away the, the element of the, the sloppy writing and the kids that don't know how to write. The notes already there. Oh, I want my note here. I want my note there. It's been teaching direction, pitch, recognition, everything. I think that, that has been wonderful. And then I, sometimes I just show them straight concerts, pieces of concerts, or where they, when they actually see it, it makes a lot more sense. When you want to talk about comparing things, they will actually sit down and converse with you. So that's been wonderful.
Um, in my classroom this year, we've used a smart board. We use the Abbott Media Camera and the wireless pens and student pens. We use the iPad um, for individual work and group work. We've also used um, the iPad pod so that we can uh, listen to music while we're working. The technology that I've used in my classroom was the Aver Media document camera and the document pen and the iPad. This year through my class we've done a lot of things with technology. The most recent thing we're doing is a pixel style art mural. It's 8 foot by 8 foot and it's made out of post-it notes. We um, did research online and found a site called Heavy Mural that helps you design using an image of your choice. Um, we've done many other things. We've done digital photography. We've done light painting using um, a camera with a stop shutter speed while the students painted with flashlights and that recorded the image. We've done um, drawings on the iPad using Sketchbook Pro. Uh, we've done photo transfer. I have a, a little autistic second grader who I had in first grade. He barely sits in a chair, and his aide does all his work, and uh, I get frustrated because he's not doing anything. So I, I thought, how about the iPad? I'll pull the iPad out and see if it can help. So I turned it on, went to a shape builder puzzle. And you touch the shape, and, and it moves, and it animates the shape puzzle thing. And he obviously saw it somewhere before because... He doesn't take direction at all, nor is he verbal. So he touched the screen and it started sliding. And he he was as happy as he could be. And the next week he came into the art room and he just wanted to know where it was. That was basically, he doesn't know what it's called, but that's what he wants to do. And so now that's what he wants to do when he comes in. I just love the iPad. I, you know, really enjoy using it. I don't know what's coming the kids work with partners and they create um, a project together on the iPad. I've really noticed that the kids um, are working well together when using them um, and it improved the motivation because the kids really want to experience that technology so they work better because I usually um, use it as a little motivating factor for the regular classroom. Um, so I've noticed that it improves the kids motivation and their group work. Um, and their paired activities have been much better. The students are a little more excited to come, mm -hmm. to come to class. It's not just paper and pencil and paint anymore. It's you know the smart more, the iPad, and uh, they enjoy coming more, which makes discipline and things like that a lot easier. And I really like using the ladybug in my class because uh, before, if I was on a demo, I would sit down at a table and I would have to have all the students come over around the table. Now I can sit in the back of the classroom, the students are at their seats, and uh, I work on the ladybug, gets projected up onto the screen, and they can just sit at their seats and either go along with me while they're done the project, or they can watch and I can just keep replaying it for them. So it's been very handy and help having the camera on the projector screen has been the best because now they can all see and they like that they can watch it more than once. When I do a demonstration with a document camera, all the students can see all the lines. The camera is really useful for recording my lessons and my demonstration. The recording part is really nice because if they miss a class, um, I can replay it. And it's also helpful to replay it during class time.